Despite everything, it's still Undertale. Let's find out if anyone played it. Welcome everyone, I am Oldbit and this is Did Anyone Play? A series where we investigate, analyze, and determine the truth about how much gamers have truly played and completed video games. How do we do this? We use trophy and achievement milestones within games and then compare those results to our huge gaming database to evaluate and rank games compared to the rest of the industry. Using objective data and statistical comparisons, we can draw conclusions. We aren't reviewing games in a traditional sense. Our goal is to provide analysis that can be better used to understand player behavior while ignoring game sales and hype to ensure we see reality as it truly is. Remember that all percentages we will be talking about here come from the total number of players that have actually launched and played the game for any period of time, so these results are a full reflection on how gamers played Undertale. A special note on Undertale. The developer, Toby Fox, didn't really want trophies or achievements in this game, so Steam has no achievements, but the consoles have a policy to ensure they are included. And as always, Switch isn't included because they don't have trophies either. That means all we have to look at are results from PlayStation and Xbox. So while this is not a complete analysis for the game, it is the best we can do at this time. And I do respect the developer's wish to not have milestones, as for some players that can distract from playing the game in a more natural way. I tend to be a good example of that. Please drop a like or a sub to the channel if you want more of these types of videos. We're just starting out, so anything you can do is very much appreciated. And a quick spoiler warning, as we may be talking about some elements of late game progression. So let's find out if anyone actually played Undertale on PlayStation and Xbox. The first milestone the players would likely reach is called Ruins. This milestone is achieved once a player simply enters the ruins. This cannot be missed, and happens extremely early in the game. So how many players made it to this first early milestone? On PlayStation, 91.6% of players reached the ruins, and on Xbox, 76.3% made it there. So this is our first indication that consoles might not look the same. Let's go to the graph. Undertale is above the industry average on both consoles, which is a great start. Clearly PlayStation is stronger, but there is very likely a Game Pass effect on Xbox for Undertale, since it was available on Game Pass for a period of time. Still, a solid start compared to the industry numbers. So what is Undertale? It's a single-player 2D RPG. The player controls a child who has fallen into the underground and there meets monsters while trying to get back to the surface. The uniqueness of Undertale comes in how the player can approach different situations. Combat is a sort of bullet hell inspired minigame, but situationally the player can choose to kill or be a pacifist depending on how they want to handle each encounter. Essentially developed and published by one individual, Toby Fox, it is the quintessential embodiment of what an indie game can be. Its release time frame is interesting as it launched on Steam in September of 2015, PlayStation in August of 2017, Switch in September of 2018, and finally on Xbox in March of 2021. So the PlayStation and Xbox release is nearly four years apart. The second milestone all players would likely reach is called Mouse. This is awarded after a player reaches the midpoint of the ruins. Once they enter a room with a piece of cheese on the table, the milestone is met. How many players made it here? PlayStation has 81.1% of players seeing cheese, while Xbox has 61.2%. At this point, both consoles are still above the industry average. However, it should be noted that Xbox has lost nearly 40% of its players at this early stage, twice as much as PlayStation. It's always good to understand the competition a game was up against when it launched. With the somewhat convoluted release schedule, we will look at the PlayStation launch specifically. What was happening around August 15th of 2017 in the gaming world, while titles like Sonic Mania, City Skylines, and Agents of Mayhem came out around this time on the platforms. Looking at Google Trends here, we see that Undertale in Blue was doing decently at the time of release, but also had very stiff competition from Sonic. But you also see a very consistent level of interest in Undertale, so it's clear that the hype was solid for Undertale, but it had solid competition as well. We like to pick a mid-game marker for our third milestone. Here we have chosen the aptly named milestone, Midpoint. This is awarded when the player leaves Snowden and reaches an underground-like cave area with a waterfall. How many players have reached this milestone? PlayStation reached 55.7% and Xbox is at 30.1%. Here PlayStation is still well above the industry average, so Undertale is doing really good there. On Xbox, this is the first time we see that platform fall below the average. And while I believe Game Pass is making Xbox numbers drop, it isn't as severe as other Game Pass titles, and I think that goes towards the strength Undertale actually has. How did Undertale do with critics? Metacritic for PlayStation rates it at 92 out of 100. On OpenCritic, Undertale has a rating of 93, with 97% of critics recommending it. I think we can say the reception was excellent for Undertale. 
The most important milestone is our fourth one and what we base our industry ranking on. For Undertale, there is no milestone for completing the game, so we chose one that is the closest possible to represent that. It definitely shows how many players truly played Undertale. This milestone is called Good Luck and is awarded when a player reaches the second save point in the core. There are a number of paths and endings for the game after this point, so this is the most common endpoint we can select. On PlayStation, 37.8% of players reached this point, and on Xbox, it was 13.7%. Now that we've reached the end of the game, we want to check the percentage of players that quit the game after making it through the first milestone but failing to reach game completion. Undertale's results are mixed, and that's not a surprise based on what we have seen so far. Undertale performed well on PlayStation, but underperformed on Xbox, again likely because of time on Game Pass. Finally, we want to look at a rare milestone to see how gamers handled the late game. As always, Undertale has to do something different. There are different late game milestones for PlayStation and Xbox, so these are not directly comparable, but we'll still go over them. For PlayStation, the milestone is called Dog Nation Level 15, and for Xbox, the milestone is called Dog Nation 1X. So for Dog Nation Level 15, a player must donate a total of 350 gold at the Dog Shrine, and for Dog Nation 1X, a player must donate a total of 500 coins to the Dog Shrine. 14.8% of PlayStation players did this, and 1.7% of Xbox players achieved theirs. Now let's see the full picture. Here are the raw milestones for Undertale with the industry averages in gray for comparison purposes. Let's get into it. Obvious part first, Undertale on PlayStation performed great all the way through, and while Undertale does underperform on Xbox, I want to point out that these results are actually strong, especially for the first few milestones for a game that has been on Game Pass. Usually we see Game Pass drops that are enormous, but Undertale is above the industry average until the mid-game milestone, and even then just by a little. That's actually a story of strength in the end. So this is our final tally for our milestones, but now let's see how the game stacks up against all other games in our database and find out if anyone truly played Undertale. We used Milestone 4 as our ultimate ranking target. Here are the results for each of the platforms for Milestone 4 once again. It's time to reveal the final rank Undertale has in our database. Here we go. PlayStation is 8 out of 10 and Xbox is a 3 out of 10. So we can clearly say that a lot of gamers played Undertale on PlayStation and not a lot of gamers ultimately played Undertale on Xbox. And while I understand the creator not liking trophies, I do wish we had PC and Switch represented here as I think we would see those two platforms even above PlayStation, which would be a thing of beauty. So these are the industry rankings, but our database is able to give us other comparisons as well. Let's break it down. Here we can show the breakdown for Undertale across class, genre, review score, and game length. Please keep in mind that because we are comparing data across smaller subsets, the statistical power of these rankings are far weaker than our overall industry ranking. Starting off with class comparison, Undertale is an indie game, so ranking it compared to all other indie contemporaries, we see that the results are slightly stronger. PlayStation is now at a 9 and Xbox at a 4. Gamers played it more compared to other indie titles. How about genre? We have classified Undertale as an RPG. Compared to other games in this genre, we see that PlayStation doesn't change and Xbox drops to a 2. So Undertale is a bit weaker compared to RPGs, but that can be understandable as it is a very unique take on the genre. Next is ranking based on reviews. The scores for Undertale put it in the category with games that have scored in the 90s for OpenCritic. The review rankings compared to other similarly reviewed games show no change compared to the industry rankings. I see this as a sign of strength that Undertale doesn't weaken at all against other incredible strong titles. Lastly is ranking based on average game completion length. Undertale is in the 11 to 25 hours range. Rankings compared to similar length games has no change on PlayStation, but a slight increase for Xbox. So those are the rankings, but let's see if we can tease out some other observations by looking at these results in different ways. It's time for the deep dive. Let's start with progressive player loss. Each group shows how many total players have stopped playing the game at that particular milestone. While we do see that Xbox loses more than PlayStation, what you should note here is that the loss is fairly linear. That indicates that there is no quit moment in Undertale, and player loss is more a time-based loss than an event-based loss. Moving on, we can look at milestone player retention. This calculation only takes into account the player population loss as a percentage compared to the previous milestone. For the most part, this shows that Undertale actually loses more players as a percentage progressively at each milestone. So player loss is not entirely linear, but increases over the course of the game. A slight curve up, if you will. How about completionists? How did the rarest milestone shake out in the different platforms? Remember, these aren't completely comparable, but the takeaway is clear. PlayStation players dominated the most involved milestones. 
Finally, we check on early versus late game retention. When you read a chart like this, the best performers are further away from the center of the circle. Here we can see that at every point in the game and in every category, Undertale on PlayStation widely outperformed Undertale on Xbox. Let's take one final look at all the platforms and their Milestone 4 results, but this time we show the full percent rank within our database. This is to give you a detailed view of how the rankings played out. Use this data as you will. Let's wrap this up. So what are our major takeaways from all the data? Undertale was always going to be a tough one to analyze, but this game deserves more attention. PlayStation shows how strong Undertale can be as a huge percentage of players truly played Undertale there. And not only that, know that we cannot count the number of multiple playthroughs a player might have had as this game begs to be played numerous times, making different decisions throughout to see how the story evolves. It's a very unique game experience. And while Undertale results on Xbox don't look very good, we know why. The Game Pass effect that we see so many games deal with when put on that service. But Undertale fought hard to buck that trend. Instead of an early cliff where players drop a game instantly, we saw that Undertale held on to more players than we normally see with a Game Pass game. It overcame the disadvantage that comes with that service and fought to hold on to players better than we've seen on most games in that situation. We cannot leave out that this is just a small part of the Undertale story, as we are missing two very large player bases for this game. PC and Switch both have Undertale, but no trophies or achievements, so we can't get the data that we need, but if I had to offer an opinion, it would be that both of those platforms could likely be above PlayStation in terms of results. Undertale is an amazing achievement for a single developer, and I've worked hard here not to spoil anything about the endings or the deeper meaning of what Undertale's story evolves into. It's an experience that should be had by as many people as possible. Undertale is acclaimed for its thematic story, combat, musical score, characters, dialogue, and just about everything else. It is a beloved indie title, and I think our results here reflect that. And that's a wrap. Hopefully you all found this data interesting, and we all learned a little bit more about our gaming world today, and Undertale in particular. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to do all the YouTube support stuff. Give us a like and a sub if you haven't already. I'd love to read any comments you have down below. What conclusions do you all take from this data? And of course, feel free to suggest the next game we should look at to determine if anyone played it. Until then, take care of yourself and each other.